Hey, welcome to Gold's Garage. So this video is going to have uh, multiple purposes. This is a 307 that we have converted from a flat tap cam to a hydraulic roller cam. And there was a previous video we made about a month ago, all about the details of that. And we're converting it because the flat tap cam after a year of service uh, started to round off the lobes and we had another condition with real low oil pressure. So it's a rebuild and not something that I'm happy about. Obviously, I never like to do rework, but you got to make things right. And, and I, I'm going to cover a whole bunch of subjects, how you can use cause and effect analysis to figure out what, what caused it. Uh, I'm going to show you some specifics uh, with the melling oil pump, which is one of the potential causes. It may not be melling's fault. I don't know that, uh, but I'll get into that. And then we're going to start it up. This engine is going on the dyno on the 15th, uh, 14th to 15th of January, a couple weeks from now anyways, two Saturdays from tomorrow. So uh, once again, so back to the beginning, how do you be sure you never have a flat tap of camshaft failure? You don't use one, you use a roller cam. And that's what we decided to do in this case. And as I mentioned before, the only thing wrong with roller cams is they cost a lot of money. And that's why I didn't push it on this build because the, the, sometimes the incentive to use a roller cam is to make a lot more power. And that's not the case here. This is a, a 307 that's going in a heavy truck with a standard trans, or automatic transmission, uh, stock rear end and, and stock torque converter. And so this is not a high revving deal. So there's no incentive to use a roller cam for that reason. So we use the flat tap cam. And it went through all the natural processes that we do. We, we primed the oil system. Every, it's a total uh, blueprint rebuild, primed the oil system, started up, changed the oil, put new oil in it again, checked all the valves, ran it on the test stand, ran it on the dyno. All that was good. And a year later, it's back here. So uh, just going over, one of the things I'd like to introduce is in, in my experience in heavy industry, I was responsible for maintenance and engineering and quality control. And one of the tools we use when we have something fail with was called uh, cause and effect analysis or base cause analysis. And so whenever something fails, you got to do two things. You got to fix it, but you got to figure out how it broke because if you don't, it's going to fail, it's going to fail again. So this one was, was a challenge because once again, it ran good off the dyno, uh, if you watch my videos, you've heard me say, it's like the birth of a baby. If it gets past the first 20 minutes, it's probably going to be fine and have a long and happy life. And this one lasted a year, but more importantly, about a thousand miles as far as I can figure. So I use a, a, a technology that I learned in my corporate career called cause and effect analysis. And if you ever have a problem where you don't, the obvious, the problem isn't obvious, the cause isn't obvious and you don't know, uh, it's a methodical, comprehensive way to vet out all the possible causes and identify the ones that are likely causes uh, so you can take action, so you're not just guessing. And if, if you're interested in that, that's a whole science. There's books written on it. There's professors in the subject. Uh, but if you Google it, you'll get a pretty good description of how it works, and it applies in this case. So I applied it to this engine when it came back. I wasn't very happy. A year later, took the camshaft. So when it came in, the oil, the oil pressure was low and the camshaft was getting noisy. We took the camshaft out and in a previous video, I showed the lobes of the camshaft. All of them were rounded off a bit. None of them were like wiped right out as, uh, as is fairly common. So that made me suspicious. But the other indication was that the oil pressure was very low. <clears throat> in fact, at idle, it was less than five PSI when the engine, when the oil was hot. And obviously that's not enough because the camshaft needs oil splash it's the camshafts the only part in the engine has direct metal to metal contact uh, and therefore it needs oil splash to lubricate and take the heat away and if it's idling at no oil pressure or five psi it's not going to get that and and that's definitely a contributing cause so applying cause effect analysis first of all what you do is you list all the possible causes so green light situation everything don't think of how bad, how dumb it sounds, put it down. And then you vet them out one at a time and you eliminate them as possible causes if you can provide factual information to do that. 
So I did that and I ended up with three possible causes. So one was, uh, and there's widespread information on the internet about this, uh, flat tap and camshaft failures, people are blaming, you know, Chinese cars and a whole bunch of other stuff. Some of that may or may not be true, I don't know. There's some pretty good videos showing uh, doing hardness tests of Chinese cars and they were just fine, like 50 Rockwell or whatever. So I can't say that for sure, but it's a potential cause and there's a whole bunch of camshafts out there in the world and in this continent that flat type of camshaft failures have been blamed on that. So that definitely had to be a possible cause. Uh, the second was, as I mentioned in a previous video, this engine underwent some considerable stress from the time I did not install this engine. It was installed and just for a variety of reasons, it was run without gauges for a period of time. Uh, and, and we know they're running in a very lean condition at high RPM. It was kind of an uncontrolled situation that may or may not be one of the causes. So that's one of them I can't eliminate. And the third is when you do cause and effect analysis, if you could put two causes together that are linked, you're likely getting close. So I put together the fact that the oil pressure was low uh as well as the camshaft was failed so i'm going to show a little exhibit here uh, this is a melling m55 oil pump there's a million of them running around melling m55 standard gear pump so if you're not experiencing gear pumps when a gear pump turns oil has to get displaced or something has to break there's no there's no relief unless you have a pressure relief valve and this is the bottom of every pump, the pump goes into your engine like this, uh, and the bottom of every pump is a pressure relief valve in the frame. So a pressure relief valve is nothing but a little plunger that rides in the cylinder and is acted on by a spring. And you can actually get different springs if you want higher level of oil pressure. So how it works is, and it's particularly intended for situations like when you start up and the oil is really, really thick, it's got a high viscosity, the oil pressure will be excessive. So this plunger uh, rides in this bore and it's acted upon by a spring. And when the pressure gets too high, the, the pressure pushes the plunger against the spring and opens up a port. So the oil from the pressure side of the pump goes to the, from, that's the pressure side, goes to the return side and it just short circuits inside the pump and doesn't get delivered. That's how you limit oil pressure. So if you pick a spring that's say a 50 PSI spring, that will happen at 50 PSI. It'll actually open up and dump oil back. Otherwise, in a cold situation, you could get a 100 pounds, you could burst your oil filter. So that's the reason for it being there. And there may be other reasons as well, but that's the main reason for it being there. So the spring, once again, acts against it. So when I took this pump apart, because I was suspicious, this plunger was, well, you should actually be able to turn it upside down, the plunger should fall out of there and it's not doing that. I just had it, it's stuck in there again. But it was stuck in there. It took me probably an hour because it's hard to get at, uh, getting it out of there. The plunger was stuck. So if that plunger sticks uh, when you got your oil hot at idle and uh, on the relief side, then oil is going to return to the inlet and you're not going to have any oil pressure. So it's very likely that that's what was going on when I took this pump apart. Uh, one of the possibilities though that I have to mention is that the question is, did the camshaft fail and some shrapnel get into this bore and scratch it up and prevent that plunger from moving? Or did the pump plunger fail first? And even with cause and effect analysis, I don't have a clear answer to that. What do you do? You change the pump, you know, you think about it, right? Which I've already, already done. So uh, that's one, one possible cause. I have done some research on the internet myself and found other cases where uh, oil pump, oil pressure uh, relief has been attributed to that plunger sticking. So it's not a unique situation. I don't know how common it is or how often it contributes to failures. And for what it's worth, that little plunger is only about a little over 400 thousandths in diameter. I calculated the area of it. So when you have 50 PSI pounds per square inch, it's only 0.15 square inches. So 50 PSI pounds per square inch is only seven and a half actual pounds of force pushing on that plunger. So it wouldn't take very much if it got jammed or something got jammed in there to prevent it from moving and cause it to stick in the open position 
thus you're going to have uh, low oil pressure and that's what we had here. Once again, I can't be sure whether that happened first or whether the camshaft started to fail first. My thinking is right now, it's probably this is the most likely cause. So a couple other things I want to bring up is, is if you are starting a flat tap of cam up, engine up. Now this is a, a, a roller cam, so not an issue. We started up and we're not even worried about that. But, and we've had a nice clean start. We're going to start and run it today. And this will be the last time it, go, it runs before it goes to the dyno. And it goes through all the natural processes, start it up, drain the oil, check the filter, all that stuff. So what I've done in this case, I've added a couple things uh, that I can point out if you're using a flat tap of cam, if you want to protect your engine. This is a standard oil filter adapter. And an oil filter adapter works like a pressure relief valve. And the idea of that is there's a little plunger in here and that plunger, uh, when it gets oil pressure, pushes on it from the other side, from this side, uh, opens up. So same situation, if the oil's coming to the outside of your filter, instead of getting to the inside of your filter, it short circuits back into the engine. So I've always thought, you know, when something like this happened and your crankshaft scratched up, the filter should have protected that. But my conclusion is the filter's probably bypassing more often than, than you think. Certainly at very high RPM, uh, the, disc, the filter just can't handle the volume and it goes into bypass. So what I did in this case, this is the adapter out of this engine and I put one in that's got that bypass blocked. And it's actually out of a race car motor that I've used before and it's blocked. Now, before you go and do that warning, the, 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 uh, the alternative is if you get in that situation, you have oil bypassing your filter and maybe dirty oil getting to your engine. If it's blocked and there's no other remedy, you might have no oil getting to your engine. So be careful if you're thinking about doing that. That's the risk. In this case, we're starting it up under a very controlled condition. I've got gauges. And before I deliver this to the customer, I will put the standard uh, oil filter adapter back in. Another thing that I, I got from the race car days, this is a screen that goes between your oil filter and the oil filter adapter, you can buy this screen on Amazon. It's about $40, which is a lot of money for a little screen, but it might be worth $40. So it is a pre-filter before oil gets to the outside of your filter. If you have any shrapnel, it's going to get caught in that screen. So I actually use this on the startup after, and I only run it for one cycle, bring the engine up to full temperature, shut it off, drain the oil, Breaks my heart to throw 60 bucks worth of good oil down the drain, but that's exactly what I do. And inspect the filter and inspect this. And fortunately, uh, in this case, I found absolutely nothing, a little bit of lint in it, and that was it. But it did stop the lint for what it's worth. So that's another thing you can think about. You can put that in and leave it in forever. I've looked, done some research on the internet, and I found other examples where people that use these things and believe in them. It's just called an oil filter pre-screen or something. I'm sure if you look on Amazon that you can find it. And I will use that again on startups. Uh, once again, I will not deliver an engine with the oil filter bypass block because I don't have control of the circumstances that engine is going to be operated under. It will be delivered under standard conditions. But that's a couple of things if you want to think about on the startup because one of the problems with the flat tap camshaft failure is it doesn't just destroy the camshaft, it destroys your bearings and your crankshaft, scratches up the crank and the whole engine is a mess when you take it apart. So you don't want that to happen. So a couple ideas that you can think about uh, if you're going to. While I'm looking at it, we made another video recently of using our endoscope camera to determine uh, basically the idea was you got an engine or you're looking at buying an engine, you don't know what's inside of it or what it is. I go through the whole process using this tool and a few other tools. We found out what engine it is, when it was made, who its mother was, and what the, looked in the cylinders, saw this condition in the cylinders, looked in the valley, saw that it was a roller camshaft engine, looked in the oil pan, see if it's a four bolt or two bolt main. I saw a question on YouTube or on, on a video the other, or on the internet the other day saying, how can you tell if it's a two bolt or four bolt? You can put this camera in the oil drain hole and it'll show you because you can see it that well. It's very, 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 very effective and very, very clean. So there is another video coming out. It's actually in the process right now, which will be coming out fairly soon. So I think I've kind of exhausted all those issues. Cause and effect analysis. If you got a problem you don't understand, 
It's pretty good technology. Nothing's perfect, but it might help you to get to the bottom of it. And I think it's worked pretty effectively for me. So the next thing we're going to do is start this engine up and let it run for the last time. And then we're going to the dyno. So let's go. We're all pressure now. Nice and quiet. Dialing at a thousand. This is a very mild hydraulic cam. I described the cam in very detail. Uh, on the other video, so if you're interested in what it is, check that video out. It's the one previous to this one. Got the mufflers on today so the neighbors won't uh, be upset. So. Okay, thank you for watching Gold Scratch. Uh, watch for the next video of this engine. It will be on the dyno. Once again, we did go to a roller cam, not because we're trying to make a ton of power. What we really want is, is to have a long and happy life. And that's one way I can be sure of getting it. After what we went through with this one, I just didn't have the heart to put another flat tap of cam, even though it probably would have been fine. I probably put a couple dozen of them in in this century and haven't had any issues the first one. And it, it's usually infant mortality. It happens right after the startup. This one ran for a year and under various conditions. And once again, I'm not absolutely sure, but I'm giving you a pretty good indication of some possible causes. If you got low oil pressure, uh, that will pump someplace to look. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, hit that button. You'll know when we make the next video. Appreciate subscribers and supporters. Like your questions and we try to answer them all. And thank you for watching Girls Garage and Happy New Year. Thank you.